Bibles or your whatever device you have that you want to get to the Word of God, if you'll look up Malachi, or as one country preacher said, Malachi. If you look up Malachi, go to Matthew and hang a left. It's the first small book, about four chapters, Malachi. You won't get anything else out of this message, but you'll leave here saying, our preacher preached on Malachi. And they'll be saying, what kind of church you go to? It's Malachi. And if you talk to a theologian, it's probably pronounced different than that. But here in the South, we'll call it Malachi, not Malachi, okay? Amen. <laughs> All right, Malachi chapter 1. We'll uh, start in a few minutes down around verse 6. But Malachi, if you've been coming uh, to Sunday morning, Wednesday nights, we've been learning several new words and how to read God's Word and how to put it into context. And, and so... Uh, I'm going to kind of continue a little bit of that. We are going, I am going to continue my series, uh, Invasion, part number four. Uh, some of you say part 12, 13, when are you going to quit? Well, they're just so good to me, I think I'm just going to keep on. So uh, this is Invasion, part four, and I would subtitle today's message, The Invasion of the Church. The Invasion of the Church. And I really could probably tweak that and, and put the invasion into the church. Because so far the church really hadn't invaded too much that I see in the world. This is a message I don't really want to preach. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm, I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not here to tell you everything that you're doing wrong because I don't know what you're doing wrong. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you as a whole <clears throat> some of the things that we're missing in the church. And I'm getting it right out of the Bible. So this isn't the first uh, go around for this thing, okay? So the purpose of Malachi... When he's writing these four chapters, they're not very long. It's a brief period of, of, a, of a, what we'd call a minor prophet in the Bible. Um, only spanned about 30 years at best. Uh, maybe some scholars even think that uh, he was really on the scene maybe, maybe about 10 years in, in ministry, but at 30 at, at the best, I would, I would say. And um, he is trying to do this. When we read Scripture, you, you'll get it together, but I want to give you a little platform, a little layout here. Um, Malachi is trying to bring the performance in line with the profession of the church. Did you get that? He's trying to bring the performance of the church in line with the profession. In other words, what we say we're doing, we ought to be doing. A lot of times we, we say one thing and do another. We act like uh, we're doing something and we're not. You know, the, Jesus got onto the Pharisees and Sadducees on different occasions. One particular occasion where he stood and he poked his chest out and he began to pray a prayer. Lord, I thank thee that I am not like the others. See, it sounded good on the outside, but see, they were, they were trying to be holy but yet condemning someone else. That's the problem. So what type, we learned some things like narrative. So when you read a passage of Scripture, you want to know what the narrative is. In other words, where is it coming from? Is it historical? Is it gospel? It is epistle. Epistle means instruction. Uh, what, type of, uh, what type of narrative is it? Well, this is unique in this passage of Scripture in Malachi because there's, there's, um, it works off of prophecy, the narrative of prophecy. Now, we think of prophecy typically as being something we tell of the future, and, and that would be correct. But when you're talking about prophecy in the Bible, there's two types of prophecy. Number one is the predictive, what we call predictive prophecy, and that tells of future events, things to come. There's also a second type of prophecy that is called didactic, and it is a call for people to line up morally and to teach the truth now if I stop right there I think you could get the picture that today we need the church to line up morally and we need the church to teach the truth amen amen I like the way you're man that amen's coming right there I, mean, I like that that's good got 45 more minutes of this stuff man but also there's an, a second part of the didactic prophecy and this is what it does and this is where we're going to get into Malachi. The, the second part of the didactic prophecy exposes sin and calls repentance, calls us to repentance and obedience. Watch this. It calls us, see we think of prophecy as 
uh, only revelation or something from Ezekiel or Jeremiah or Daniel. And that's, that, that it is true. But there's also things that you need to be aware of right now that's happening right now. And God will send the prophet along to tell us about those things that are happening currently in the church or currently in the world. I am not a prophet, but I'm the best thing you're going to get today. So in Malachi chapter 1, let's start at verse 6. <clears throat> Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 says this. I am reading from the New King James Version. I'm not sure what we have up. Is that what we have up, Hunter? <clears throat> verse 6 says this. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? Now this is God speaking, okay, through the prophet. <clears throat> and if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in what, have we, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but you say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it, offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Think about it. What you offer to God, would he be pleased? In your worship today, can you say, boy, I need a do-over? Or you say, no, I gave him everything. For 15 minutes, I gave him everything. I blocked out everything. I really poured out my heart and my affection toward him. Could we say that today? Or would we say, can we redo that? Because I came up short. Come on. <clears throat> Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts, verse 9, but now entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, he will accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you who should shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord. He's speaking to the priest here, saying if you're just going to do it in vanity, just shut the doors. Just close the doors. Let's, let's don't bring half-heartedness to me. Let's don't bring what's left over to me. Just shut the doors, please. Who's got enough nerve as a pastor to shut the door and say, we're not doing it right. We're only giving him half of what we should be giving him. We wouldn't do that because then how would we get your tithes? Come on. Mm, preacher, you're, you're doing good. <clears throat> it's going to get better. Verse 11, for from the rising of the sun even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts, verse 12, but you profane it. In that you say the table of the Lord is defiled and its fruit and its food is contemptible, you also say, Oh, what a weariness, and you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, the sick, thus you bring an offering. Should I accept this from your hand, says the Lord? Verse 14. But cursed be the deceiver. One translation says the cheat. Cursed be the cheat who has in his flock a male and takes a vow but sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Let us pray. Father, I pray that the word you have laid upon my heart is from your heart. Lord, the words that I speak or Lord, they're coming directly from you, Lord. The words that roll from my lips and my tongue, God, that you have, you have infiltrated my mind with your spirit and I speak what you want to be spoken today to your church. Father, I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 
Now, we didn't read Malachi chapter 2. I'm going to refer to Malachi chapter 2. So that's your homework when you go home. It's four chapters. You can read all four chapters in about 20 minutes. It'll take you the rest of your life to digest them. Come on. So you take Malachi chapter 1, and there's some things that I want to bring out in both chapters. <clears throat> Number one, the, the uh, enemy invaded the church, watch this now, via the route of home. I wish I had my, my blackboard up today, my, my dry brace board. So you have, the, you have the church here. I like illustrations. Church. You have the home. Now you think, well, that's two different things. Well, physically they are. But people make up the church. So if you're a person in here, raise your hand. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know that you're a person. But we're okay with that, I understand. So the church is made up of the people. Things creep into the church. The church gets invaded by things from people. So the invasion of the church has happened via the route of the home. Now watch where I'm going. The condition of the heart at home. The condition of your heart at home will reflect the actions of the church. Every single time. Without, without question, the condition of your heart at home, because the heart is in you, your enthusiasm is in you, your excitement is in you, watch this, your worship is in you, your submission is in you, your, your, your praise is within you, your Bible reading is within you, your study time is within you at the home. So the condition of the heart will always reflect the condition of the church. Preacher, you're preaching way better than I am in. I was just looking around to make sure the other person was over there listening because they need this. So how did the church get invaded? Well, we know through the route of home, right? So I got a few things right out of Scripture that you're going to be upset with God about. You're not upset with me. You, you, you can't be mad at me. Because I'm just telling you what the Word says. Amen? I'm preaching you the gospel. You, you, I'm, that's why I give you the scriptures. That's why we put them on the screen so you can go look them up. Oh, here we go. Malachi chapter 1. The first thing that they started doing... You have to read the whole passage of Scripture. But the first thing they stopped doing was they stopped honoring God. They stopped honoring God. That's the very first thing that happens. And at home, when you stop honoring God, now watch me because I'm going to get real good here in a minute. When you stop honoring God at home, it ain't very long that you're going to stop honoring God at the church house. It's not going to be very long that you're going to stop bringing your best because you're not honoring God. If a dignitary came into this house today, you're going to bring your best. If I told you the governor was coming today, whether you like him or not, I had somebody tell me that, well, I wouldn't come anyway. Well, then you got a problem. Whether you like him or not. Because honor is given where honor is due. You may not like a person. You may not like God. You may not care for God, but he deserves honor whether you like to give it to him or not. And guess what? He's going to get it. If you attend this church, he's going to get it. Glory. So, so the condition of the heart reflects what goes on. So when we quit honoring at the house, we quit honoring at the church house. Watch, I'll get some... Mm. Well, how did they do that in the Old Testament? What was Malachi talking about? He said they, they had the ritual down. They came to church just like you and I. They came on Sundays or whenever day they went. They came and they brought their stuff and they brought their sacrifices and they, they followed protocol to the T. 
Problem is, at the house where they were supposed to be raising the spotless, blemish, no blemish lamb, where they, where they were supposed to be taking care of the business that would ultimately reflect what goes on at the church, they begin to let the spots come in at the house. They begin to take the lambs and say, well, you know, that's pretty good. I mean, there's not much wrong with it. He only has a broken leg. He's got three others to walk on. So, hey, it's you know, three out of four is pretty good. Come on. You, 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 I'm not trying to be funny. How many times do you limp in here on one leg? How many times do you limp in here and try to get one arm, one elbow up? Oh, well, I don't worship out of well. Okay. Well, how many times do you open up your heart and sing to the top of your lungs? They brought those lame sacrifices. They'd bring them. They'd put them on the altar. And God said, where's the priest? Where's the pastors? They said, that's not good enough. I'm a holy God. I'm a great king. I will be, pro I will be proclaimed. Hey, Israel, you don't want to do it? The Gentiles will. You don't want to? I'll find a people that's going to worship me. I'll find a people that's going to bring me their best. If you don't want to, that's okay. Step aside. Pastors, tell them to step aside because somebody's coming in to worship me. We find in Malachi, and I didn't read that chapter, but I'm going to give you verses real quick if you're taking notes. Malachi chapter 2, in verse 2, one of the things that they're doing, the, the church quit giving glory to God. He said, oh, pastor, we, we worship here all the time. We worship here all the time, pastor. No, we don't. No, we don't. You may be sitting in an atmosphere where some are worshiping, but you not, may not be worshiping all the time. The church collectively is not worshiping. If the church collectively this morning was, was in, a, in a, a spirit of worship, we'd still be worshiping right now. Because when you get to worshiping somebody like God, when you get to worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you just can't stop. He's not a light switch that you can cut on and off. He's, he's to be glorified. And when you get in his presence, you can't help but worship him. You can't help but worship him. The next thing you know in Malachi chapter 2, in verse 8, God says that they caused people to stumble by breaking the covenant of Levi that God made with, with the, the, the Levi, the, the priest of the house. And they broke a covenant. And you got to read. I'm just filling in some spots. So you got to read to fill in all the blanks. And some of the things they did, here's what they did. They married in verse 11. He says, and they married the daughters of of other gods in other words they had a one true true God and then their offspring went over here and married outside of that to people who worshiped other gods and they brought that God or that type of worship into the house and said well why don't we just mix it up a little bit why don't we just do it this it, you know it looks godly so it ought to be godly I look like Brad Pitt too. In my mind, come on, it's, I, I'm making a point. In my mind, I may look just like him. Do I look like him? A little difference in the pocketbook, but I look just like him. No, that's just your opinion. See, see, we bring things into the church house and we want to incorporate them into the way we do things and think that they're godly and they're not godly. And the Lord says, do not bring foreign gods into the house. I am a jealous God. I will be the only one worshipped in the house. There shall be no other gods before me. Mm. Fourthly, fourth thing in Malachi chapter 2. In verse 13, now this is a good one right here. They wept and poured tears on the altar as if they really cared. They would come in and go through the ritual as if it, they were really trying to make someone across the aisle or across the other side of the church feel like that they were really worshiping or feel like that they were really sincere. They would come in and they would beat on the altars and cry out to God, but they didn't mean it. 
They were bringing their tears and they would smear them on the altar and say, look how much I've cried. Look how much I've wept for you, O Israel, and O God. Look at this. God says it's fake. You're doing it so you can be seen. Ooh, it's quiet in the Pentecostal church today. Another thing, there's many things. I, I picked out five things. In verse 17, these things are, are something that you can see in, t- in the church today. That if you look back at Malachi, you can say, man, I can just overlay these into the church today, into the society today. Here's one. In verse 17, when they started calling evil good. They started calling evil good. My God, does it get any plainer than this, church? Is it any more clear where we are? We are, we are actually right where Malachi was at 450, 420 to 450 B.C. We're in the same position some 2,500 years later. I told you nothing new, right? God gave us his best. Do we agree that he gave us his best? He gave us his best, and we give him what's left. When it comes to us, we bring in and say, well, this is all I got, Lord. I don't have but 10 minutes a week. I don't have but five minutes to give you through the week. I don't have much worship, Lord. You know, I'm so busy. I really hadn't even thought about you, God. So I'm just going to give you kind of what I think about you. We spend hours. Watch this. This message is fixing to be over in just a few minutes. Matter of fact, honey, would you come on to the piano? I don't know if I can stand these wonderful looks and these hallelujahs that you're giving me. (laughs) We spend hours studying and working hard for advancements at work, but minutes reading the Bible, worshiping Him at home. If anyone ever tells me Ever again. I don't care. This church or a hundred other churches. Our church is just dead. I don't hear that here. But if they do, I'm going to say, well, you must have a dead home life. Because it starts at the house. You don't come here to get your worship on. You ought to be clothed. The Bible says that you enter into his gates. You enter into his courts with it. You don't come here to get it. You're supposed to have it with you. So it's at the house. We spend all this time trying to advance to this worldly stuff, and there's nothing wrong with having things. You got extra things? Hallelujah. Don't bring them to the church. We don't want your junk. I was talking about cash. We have invested so much into little Johnny and little Susie. I had to write all this down because it's so good. We've invested so much into little Johnny and little Susie to be the best ball player, dancer, Cub Scout, Girl Scout, fisherman, outdoorsman, but we do not teach them to honor God anymore. We spend hours when we get home and we're tired pitching the ball and taking them here. But we spend zero time in the bedroom, in the living room, teaching them about God's principles and how to honor God. And we wonder, well, I don't know what's wrong with our generations. I don't know what's wrong with our kids. Well, I can tell you, we quit honoring God, the God of all gods. We took him out of a home. Therefore, the church is reflective of what we're not doing at the house. It's good preaching. You still love me? You know I'm not trying to be your friend while I'm right here, right? My job is not to be your friend while I'm here. It's to get you to heaven. It's to get you closer to God. It's to show you His commandments and His principles and how to get there, right? Okay, just so we're clear. So if you come up to me after church and say, I hated the message. (laughs) 
Here's another one. Watch me. honoring God. Are you with me? Am I doing okay? I'm going to ask you that again right after this. <clears throat> we bring our kids to church. We stick an electronic device into their hands and say, now be good. Somebody started to clap. Worship is going on. And the only thing that these kids are interested in is that they beat Candy Crush. I don't know all the little kids' games. That's an adult game too, isn't it? Huh. Did they score high enough on whatever they were trying to kill? whatever they're trying to get has nothing to do with honoring God and we're to come to a house and honor God and you can stand up here as a parent and you throw your hands up I started to name, call this message it's 10 o'clock, where are your kids? <laughs> Woo, you good up in here today we come and we worship, we throw our hands up. Do you know part of worshiping God is teaching your kids how to worship God? Do you know part of worshiping God and honoring God is showing them how to do honor and, and to, to God? Do you understand that? This and your kids are acting like heathens in the balcony, running up and down the hallways on their devices is not you honoring God. He says, where's the pastors? Close the doors. You still love me? We must get converted, watch this, and get decided that we're going to live for Christ. It's one thing to be converted. It's another thing to get decided that I'm going to live for Christ. You hear me? Hey, it's just a house burning. It's all right. They're going to be okay. Them people, they at church. They at church. Thank God we got volunteers who get up and do this stuff. They don't get paid a dime. Hallelujah. You can get converted by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You believe that in your heart, Romans 10, 9 and 10. You, you can do that. But you have to decide in your mind that you're going to honor Him, that you're going to worship Him. There's a conscious decision that takes place from here up when you get saved that says, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to serve Him. We learned last week, Romans 7, 25 says, with my mind I serve Christ. Isn't that something? You've got to decide. Watch this. I'm closing because this is all you can stand of this. It's all I can give you. It's all I can stand of it. But here's the answer. It may seem like, man, we're going down the toilet. No. No, Malachi, I, I told you 2,500 years ago, right? We ain't been flushed yet. You know why? Because there's always a remnant of people. There's always somebody that says, God, I'll honor you. It may start with one or two or 12 or 100 or 5,000. But they say, I'll worship you, God. I'll honor you. I'll give you what you're due. And there's a remnant. 
and they begin to worship him and things begin to change and God says well because they're worshiping because they honor me guess what I'll, ch I'll change some things in their favor you say well that doesn't happen we had not read your Bible he was willing to spare Sodom and Gomorrah over and over again down to just one can I get just one worshiper in this house today to stand and say, I'm going to worship you, God. If we could just get one worshiper to stand and say, God, I don't care what the rest of them do. I don't care what they think about me. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to honor you no matter what. Hallelujah. Just, just so you know right here, I want to just give you, when you cry out, I'm going to teach you. You're not clapping because I said something good. You're clapping because you honor him. Because I, but besides him, I don't have anything good to say. Do you hear me? Outside of him, I have nothing good to say. So now, when I say something good, you're honoring God. Here's the answer to all of our problems. Here it is now. I'm not finished yet, but I'm close. Here's the answer to our problem in the church and society today. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 14, isn't it? 14. Nope. Starts at 13. We like 14. But it starts at 13 and it finishes at 15. Watch this. 2 Chronicles 7, 13. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain. You ever felt like you've been in a place where God wasn't raining in your life? Where that it was just the heavens were brassed over and they were shut and you didn't sense God, you didn't feel God, you didn't hear from God. It was like the 400 years of darkness between the Old and New Testament. You were just there. Well, that could be from God. Could be because you hadn't been honoring Him. He says, I'll, just, I'll back Him let you do it by yourself. Go ahead and do what you want to do. Have you, have you fun. Watch this. When I shut up heaven and there's no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among my people, we are in a dry and weary land when it comes to honoring God's house, the reverence of His property, the reverence of His spirit. Come on. We're in, we're in a desolate land. The locusts have come in and devoured He says this, but if that happens, if, you, if the people will do this one thing, these, there's two or three things here, watch. Verse 14, if my people, we had a little test a while ago. If you're a person in here, raise your hand. People would be plural of a person. That's still you. Word still applies to you. Watch. <clears throat> if my people who are called by my name, here's where we have a problem in Western civilization. Humble. What does it say? Is it up there? Themselves. That means you. I'm not worried about whether Billy humbles himself. That's where we get in trouble. I need to worry about whether Marty's going to humble himself when I come into the house, when worship is going on, when honor should be going on. Is Marty doing his part? It doesn't matter if everybody else is doing it. You know what my, my mom and daddy used to say? They said, uh, son, if everybody else jumped off the bridge, would you do it too? I was always ignorant. I said, well, how deep's the water? Then usually somewhere in that neighborhood, right in this area. <laughs> it's like, no, I wouldn't do that. Just watch this. <clears throat> if they will humble themselves, it takes a lot for people to humble ourselves because we've been so, we've been so uh, programmed to be somebody. We've been programmed as men to stick out our chest and not cry and, and to be that person that, that we have all the answers to. Well, we, we talked about that last week. That was humanism. Come on. But we try to figure out everything on our own. Well, that's a problem because you're not God. So if we'll humble ourselves and women, 
Humble yourselves. And pray. Oh, my Lord, we got to do something. No, we got to do two things. No, there's more than that. Just hang on. We got to humble ourselves and then pray. Y'all ready? Am I doing okay? We have prayer twice a week at this church. And about any given time, I can count on my hand how many people's in there and sometimes have fingers left over. I don't even have to elaborate anymore on that one. They'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face. If we were as passionate about finding God, about capturing His presence, about being in His presence as we are about what we're going to do tomorrow, as we are about uh, things that's going on in our lives, as we are about our kids, or we are about making the next $5 or, or buying the next piece of property or home or, or vehicle or whatever it is. If we were as passionate, oh, just half as passionate, I'll back up, if we were a fourth as passionate, about seeking God's face as we are seeking the things and the attention and the accolade of man and the applause of man and the attaboys of man. My God, we couldn't build buildings fast enough. We, 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 we wouldn't have space for the people who are coming to say, I want to serve and follow and honor this Jesus that you're honoring, that you're serving. That was an amen moment. Come on, church. We got to get back. To the basic, I'm not making this stuff up. The church, I'm telling you, you can take Malachi one, two, and three, four turns, takes a turn halfway through chapter three. And you can overlay those right on today, almost script for script of what's happening today in the church house. And we say, well, it's just the old dried up preacher. It's just the old dried up worship team. Well, it's the leadership. It's the deacons. It's the, it's the pastors of the church. No, it's what's happening at the home. It's that we're not on our knees at home. Because if you're not on your knees at home wanting to pray, you're not wanting to come to church and pray collectively. You're not wanting to come and worship Him collectively. If you're not doing it at home, you're not going to do it here. I'm not saying that you don't pray at home. Don't say that. I'm saying when we get on our knees and we humble ourselves and we seek God. We do a lot of praying at home, but most of the time it's, God, would you fix my needs? God, would you, would you touch this and would you do this for me? And God, I need you to move this over here. And Lord, da, 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 da. we go through our list of needs. I got a list on my computer. There's nothing wrong praying your knees. I got a list oh, that when people call me, I put their name there and, and I write out there oh, on my computer right there what it is so because I can't remember everybody's name to ask me to pray. And so I write out there this or this or this and, and I go through my list and, I, and I'll say, Lord, would you know what they need here and you know this and you know this and, 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 and I go through it and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you something, church. That is not the only time you should pray. Because if that's what you think God is, is some vending machine or some prostitute that you can go give a few bucks to or you can come and show up every now and then and get your fix, then you are prostituting God and you're not honoring God's house and you're not honoring Him. You're no different than what Malachi was talking about. You seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. See, there's a repentance as well. Repentance means to turn. They were, they were sinful. God calls it sinful. When, he was, when Malachi was, was putting these, pinning these words down, it was sinful. He said, is it not sin that you're doing these things, that you're bringing me this half best, that you're bringing me the lame, that you're bringing me the sick? Is it, is it not sin? That's what he calls it, church. Somehow we don't want to call it sin. Well, we just well just be glad they're here. Praise God. Mm, hallelujah. Boy, didn't we have a good crowd, Pastor? 
Yeah, and the Lord said, close the doors. Close the doors. They're coming. Close the doors. They're doing it wrong. They're in vain. Close the doors. I'm not making this stuff up. You go home and you read it. Read in any translation you want to read. Turn from our wicked ways. Then it says this. Then I will hear from heaven. Watch this. I got to humble myself. I got to pray. I got to seek his face. I got to turn from my wicked ways. And then the God of all gods, Jehovah Jireh, the king of all kings, says, I will hear when they do these things. I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Church, if we're ever in a time that we needed our land to be healed, if we needed our government to be healed, if we needed our senators and our congressmen to be healed, if we needed the church to be healed today is the day that we need God to hear from heaven and change our land heal our land and watch this you want to get God's attention verse 15 now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place Church, if we're going to change the society, if we're going to change our babies, if we're going to keep these babies that stood up here in all these places. See, I came across here yesterday, and I began to pray for all these names. You can't see it, but there's names on these tape, on this tape right through here where they're supposed to stand. Well, I came through, and I began to pray for little Aubrey, and I began to pray for Avery, and I began to pray for, for this Presley, and I began to pray for Aiden, all these people. I began to pray for these babies and said, you know what I said? You can't have them, Satan. We're going to give them a platform, and we're going to worship with them. You want to run them out of the church? Watch me now. You want to run them out of the church? You sit out there like a knot on a log, like you ain't serving your king. You ain't honoring your God while they're up here singing. And I'll say, well, what good's it doing? What good am I doing for them? They're just there. You want to keep them in this house? You want to keep them worshiping? You want to, you want to raise up the pipers and the presses and all these, all these little kids? You want to raise them up so that you can say, hey, I was part of their life when you hear them on the radio, when you hear them proclaiming God's word. You want to be with them? You want to support them? Well, pray for them right now. Worship with them right now. Honor God for them right now and with them right now. And things will change, church. Things will change. That is the only way. That is the only way. We're going to change this mess we're in. Is when leadership. I want every leader. I want every leader in this house stand up right now. If you're an, if you're a pastor of any type, if you're if you're on a deacon board, if you're if you're in a leadership position, if you t if you teach Sunday school, if you're on a worship team, I want you to stand up right now. If you have anything to do with making church happen on Sunday, I want you to stand up right now. Come on, stand up real quick. I know some's not here, but I'm telling you right now. I'm looking at every face in this. I'm telling you right now. It starts with us. You can't expect the sheep to follow you somewhere you're not going. You can't expect the sheep to be on fire and anointed and seeking God and worshiping God. If you're not doing it, it starts with the leadership. It starts with the house at the home of leaders. And y'all can sit down. Now watch this. And the rest of you, when you see that happening, you better start following the shepherd. You better start following the leader. You better get with the program because the, God's going to hear the prayers of this house. Look, I've been talking to him a lot here lately, a whole lot about things that's going to be happening in this house. And I'm, I'm telling you, he's assured me that things are going to happen, that things are about to switch and things are about to change in this house. He gave me a word, and I know it's going to happen. And you can either get on board or you don't have to. Church, I'm telling you, God's up to something. And he's going to use a remnant of people. Miss Fondy's going to use, don't you quit praying. Don't you give up. Don't you give up when there's three people in here. 
matter of fact, all you leaders be here Sunday, be here Wednesday at six o'clock. Be in this house, be in this place at six o'clock. All my leaders. Amen. Thank you. We got to start praying. We got to start seeking God, Bevan. That's where it's at. We missed it. Tell Pastor Brandon, six o'clock. I don't care. We got a nursery. It starts at six or whatever. You got, I, I don't want an excuse. We, we're going to pray. I thought I'd get a couple of more amens, but we're going to pray. God, I got mm. to quit. Father, I ask you.